Hello, welcome back to my second part, the stage of um, the um, caricature anamorphous um, goat painting that I am actually going to be doing um, today. I'm going to be painting the goat, painting the goat. And the other two prior um, videos, um, I actually, we... Um, worked on staining the canvas and um, I was able just to just give you like um, just an introduction of um, how to stain the canvas and for this particular type of project that I'm doing it's going to be more of a it's very arts and crafty type of a painting um, for our new baby's um, nursery um, corner <laughs> and um, Later on the week, I'll be able to sh we'll show you like the nursery tour and all of that and how that worked out with the design approach that we wanted to go with it. So um, for today, um, we are going to approach the first stages of the goat. And um, what I did is I went online and it's kind of Googled a stock image, a royal stock image. Um, that was, you know, a free stock image of a close-up of a goat. Just to give a reference, a reference um, picture of what type of billy goat, which I'm going to be doing a billy goat, a billy goat, just a really kind of, a billy goat, just to kind of really give the idea of, of the, idea, the, the, uh, the idea or the point of, uh, that I, of the type of character I want to go with for this goat is going to be like a, schoolmaster like an English schoolmaster um, that's kind of what I have in mind so what we're going to do is going to get it started with um, just kind of like the the indication of the outline of the goat I kind of started a little bit here so I want to start here with the neck and uh, we we're doing something like this as I said before um, it's uh, the painting itself you know it's gonna it's more rustic and as you can see what I did is I started out with staining the canvas it's like the whole canvas is like stained like burnt sienna blues grays that sort of thing and this is something that you particularly do not have to do with your painting um, you could actually even leave some of it just completely like unfinished or do, you don't have to cover, make every, t <laughs> you don't have to make a full coverage area of the canvas. You can um, just be an, an indication because this is an arts and crafts type of folky look that we're going to do. And well, since I'm painting in oil, I can always go back. Um, this is not even a day old, the stained canvas. Um, I can always go back and like remove any type, kind of scrub it in with a tissue paper. Remove how I'm doing. I can remove it just to kind of give like a that smudge effect look, which I actually think it looks better that way, I think. Before I even start the, I mean, you can do this at any point during the, the painting. You don't have to do this now before you go into the coursework of the painting. Um, let me just, um, I forgot to take off. I'm just a little bit hot in here. Apologize for put that down. Okay, so we are going to kind of start here with our general, kind of generalizing the outline of the goat. This goat here has a long neck. This billy goat, so to speak. So I'm just going to kind of give it an indication of where my goat's going to go. I mean, we're not going to get into the high detail areas. I, I really want to keep this this painting loose as I possibly can. 
um, kind of John sing, you know, if you've ever, if you're familiar with this, the painter, um, John Singer Sargent, the way he painted was his, was his brush strokes were loose. However, however, it, it took him much, it, a lot of people, if you look at his, a lot of John Singer Sargent paintings, um, here, I'm going to pop up a photo, uh, image of one of his paintings. His artwork. You, you can see how the brush strokes here are just very, like, they look very loose. His approach to his paintings were very loose. Okay. Um, just to give you an idea. However, the way that he painted, he painted in glaze, you know, it, it took him at least oh gosh um a few weeks um even like sometimes even a month to finish a lot of his portrait paintings he did a lot of portrait paintings of a english aristocracy noblemen that sort of thing duchess and rich families that sort of thing and um so he i mean he made a, his he made a very well off amazing living as a painter because he was painting for all of these um noble men and rich folks um and so um as you can see i'm just kind of indicating it in kind of roughing it in roughing my billy goat in so but the way that he actually painted i mean his you can see how his brush strokes are just really adamant and tactile um and you can see that they're there because a lot of these like same thing with Rembrandt. You can see that those brush strokes in his um, his painting knife, the, the mark that he, he he painted a lot with a painting knife. He painted a lot with like rough edges of um, rough brushes, just to kind of give that indic those brush strokes. But he did a lot of glazing, and that's a lot of layering, lots of layering, just to get that effect going. A lot of people think, oh, look at those brush strokes. I mean, he, it's, it's, they're so tactile that they just really didn't get into, um, he doesn't go to, you know, it probably took like maybe three days, four days. No, 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 no. This is a glazing process that takes like a, quite a while, quite some time, many, um, several hours, at least several hours seven to eight hours so um but for our painting i mean we're i want to kind of give like the whole um idea i'm kind of just kind of loosely painting i'm not going to get too dark yet um so this is where the horn is going to go um i'm not going to get too dark until like maybe I, I don't want to make this too, um, how should I say, too like um, much of an underpainting. I, I want I, too much of an underpainting. I really want to give it some, some um, passion, <laughs> how do you say it, panache. I really want to give it some panache without getting too hard detailed. So, but right now, I just want to kind of give, okay, just the education, the indication of the goat, um, his features and all of this, because what I'm going to do, my la one of my last stages, when I start getting into like the costume, because it's the whole idea of doing an animal mythic, um, character painting is like you're going, you're, you're characterizing him, characterizing him as a human being of how a human being, um, relating him to a, a human figure. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm going with the, um, whole English schoolmaster look. So he, I mean, most likely he probably is going to be wearing, um, glasses, um, he's going to be wearing like a schooled, like a tie or a very like 19th century tie, a late 19th century or mid 19th century, um, uh, look kind of Charles Dickens to, um, just to kind of give, 
yeah, that character. So, um, this, I'm at a good stopping, if you guys can see that. That's, that's a very, I mean, it's, it's just very loose for right now, and that's the way we want it. We don't want to get too, um, we don't want to tighten in, we don't want to zoom in just now. Um, we want to keep it like this. Um, I may even have to come wait to come back tomorrow to do this. I mean, I'm in a very dry, arid region, <laughs> so um, it kind of, but it's winter now. It's been raining a lot for the last few days, so it this may not dry until out until tomorrow afternoon. Usually in the summer, in the dry months, in the hot months, it dries out like within 10 minutes, sometimes five minutes. So, okay, so right now, um, yeah, so I'm going to, we, I will look forward to seeing you next time. And so we can finish this up. Um, probably got two more stages to go, but um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.